went to bed yesterday and the temperature was pretty mild, around minus eight Celsius. I woke up and it's minus 17 now and it's supposed to keep dropping till about minus 20 throughout the day. And over tomorrow night, or I guess tonight, it's supposed to go down to minus 31, so it's getting colder again. Today the plan is to deliver half of my trailer here into Thompson and then go up to Gillum, Manitoba, which is further north than I've ever been before in my province of Manitoba. It's way up north. It's like a hydroelectric town. There's a big generating station, a big dam up there. And uh, we're delivering some stuff to that town. I'm gonna drop that stuff off and head back down to Winnipeg and hopefully get out of here before the cold sets in. I'm not sure if we'll be able to uh, get all the way back today, but I'm hoping. I was able to shut my truck off for night, so I didn't have to idle, it wasn't cold enough for that. Uh, my engine heater ran for about two hours before I turned it over this morning. I can set it on a little timer so it starts. Uh, I wanted to start the truck at about 7.15, so I started it at 5.15. That way by the time I wake up, I can open the hood, check the oil, check everything underneath there, close it up and turn it over and it's nice and warm. Cranked over just fine in minus 17. Usually in that cold of weather, it, it should start if you got good batteries and a good starter. But it's kind of getting to the point where it's like if you don't have like it plugged in, the block heater plugged in or an engine heater running, uh, it may be difficult to turn over and start it in the mornings. Tomorrow night would definitely be uh, a bad night to turn it off. Turn it off, it's gonna be minus 31. That's very cold. So for my American followers, let's just do the conversions for you here real quick. Because I know you guys speak in uh, what you call freedom units. The rest of the world just calls it Fahrenheit. <laughs> so we went to bed yesterday, it was minus 8 Celsius. What's minus 8 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 8 degrees Celsius is equivalent to 17.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's when we went to bed. A nice mild temperature, it's pretty warm. We woke up. And what is minus 17 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 17 degrees Celsius is 1.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're almost at zero Fahrenheit. And tonight, like tomorrow night, is supposed to go down to minus 31. What is minus 31 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 31 degrees Celsius is equal to minus 23.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so. Now, I know that uh, a big chunk of my audience is American, so now you understand the temperatures that I'm talking about. It's supposed to get cold this week up here, but stay relatively warmer down south around Winnipeg. That's why I'm trying to get everything done today so that we can run back south and hide from the cold. Okay, that's over. Yeah, it's cooling down pretty quick. <laughs> and we're still only at minus 18. Come on, Josh, stop being such a baby. It's gonna get twice as cold tonight. All right, let's man up. Whew, man's not cold. Oh, I feel like swimming. Oh, on a beach. Palm trees. It's not working, it's not working. I'm picturing it in my head. Uh, oh, there it is.
it is. Yeah, there's the nice beach. Nice warm blue water, no sharks. Yeah, an open bar, all inclusive. Right beside me is a nice tiki bar. I'm on vacation. A palm tree over me. There it is. Okay, that's enough of that. Now we gotta go norther than we are already. Oh. Okay, Gillam, Manitoba is about 250 kilometers from here. That should be two and a half hours on good highways. <laughs> We're not going down a good highway. So it's gonna be probably oh, four hours, I'm thinking. Four, maybe more. Four, maybe more. So it's uh, quarter to 10 now. Let's say once by the time we get rolling here, I gotta get all my gear off. Gotta make some food. 10, 12, 1, 2. I should be there by 2. I have two drops over there. Get them off before 5 o'clock. I should be able to get empty tonight or today and then head back as far as I can. And then point our nose south and just don't stop ever. Don't stop until you see palm trees. Just like we're facing south right now, okay? Straight south until we see palm trees. What hours of service? Uh, it's not that bad, whatever. We live up here, right? We have to, uh, well, I don't live up here. I live in the south south part of the province but it is still my province still my country you gotta love every corner of it but no one says you have to love every corner equally <laughs> I like the warmer parts those are nice I know Canada does have warmer parts people in the south of the US right now are laughing at me what warmer parts well you know if you go to Vancouver out on our west coast they don't get snow ever you know we could go there it's just there's way too many people there Everybody else had the same idea. They don't want to live where the snow is. So it's just packed full of people out there and it's so expensive. To buy like a, a two bedroom bungalow house, like a single family house, it's like three million dollars. It's like two million American dollars, two and a half million American dollars for a two bedroom bungalow, like built in the 60s. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be rich to get out of the snow. Okay, I'm gonna go right back into Thompson, back to that Petro Pass. I just wanna stop in there and collect myself, check the map, call ahead to the customer, make sure they know I'm coming. Ask them how the roads are up that way. Cause I'm guessing they're not good! So, I'm just gonna mentally prepare myself. I'm going up Highway 280 which takes us from Highway 6 north of Thompson here, east, northeast to, to Gillum, up the Nelson River. It's a remote road, a very remote road. Some long stretches where there's no cell service, no services, no nothing but wild wilderness and wild animals that want to eat you because they're very hungry, it's winter time. Actually, you know, the bears are hibernating. But the wolves are out. And the moose. The moose don't want to eat you. They just want to kill you out of spite. Such a nice, beautiful northern Manitoba day. I don't know what you were expecting, but this is what I was expecting. The snow is supposed to taper off into the afternoon. So what's falling now should be the last of it, but you know the weatherman's never right, so we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure all they do is look out the window and look, hey, it's snowing, tell everybody. That's all I do, and I'm just as accurate as they are. Definitely snowing out, just a little bit.
second, check my equipment, check my truck. Make sure I've got on clean underwear because you never know what we're going to experience out there on the winter road. customers up there I got two of them and uh, the guy said he's like be careful it's crazy out there they got like three feet of snow in some places they're working on clearing everything so hopefully by the time I get there it's all cleared and stuff but he says we don't know how that road is the 280 from Thompson out like past Split Lake out to Gillum so this might be a very interesting day we're gonna take her easy and uh, we're gonna see what happens <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. We're ready. My lights are cleaned off. Checked over my whole truck again. Tires are all inflated. Lights are working. Lights. I just said lights are clean. We've got lots of fuel. Lights are on. Let's do it. Let's do it. 306 kilometers. Into the bush, let's go. Into the snowy, snowy, cold, cold bush. Karen, no swearing on this show, it's a family show. I know, I'm thinking the same thing though. Let's go see how bad it is. <clears throat> uh, today's gonna be a good day, right? It's gonna be a good day. I just don't know how it's gonna be a good day yet, but no, we'll figure it out. We got lots of food in the truck. We got extra blankets, lots of warm clothes. Someone's jogging in this weather? Hardcore. Look at this guy go. Commitment, man. Wow. Good for you. That's dedication.
steaming all around. Yeah. It was steaming. The snow everywhere. Not not the snow, just the steam, the you steam. know, momentary. Oh wow. The other cars coming that way, we pass it in shots and I said to stop. Okay, I said, okay, it's gonna be going on right now. A few seconds. Shit, what to do? I cannot do anything because I cannot see anything. I don't know where I'm going and just slowly. Oh, and then stop. Stop. Oh. Okay. Well, he'll he'll call once he's in Thompson. I'm going to Gillum. And I'm hoping to come back this way tonight yet. Well, 911 might work on your cell phone still. That's supposed to work anywhere. Yeah. Well, you kept it upright, so that's good. Thank you, man. You're welcome. We'll check on you on the way back. there's a grader coming up ahead here he may be able to hook up his chain and pull him out you know, it's like our worst nightmare right there's no cell signal you're out here on this remote road he said he passed someone and it was a whiteout and he couldn't see where he was going by the time the snow cleared he was in the ditch so uh, on our way back we'll check on him make sure he's alright he said he's got plenty of diesel fuel his truck is running it's upright he said he's fine in his truck he's off the road he's not worried about being hit so he wanted to stay with his truck. Ah, uh, here comes that grader. Maybe he can pull him out. I don't know, he was fully loaded, so it's gonna take quite a bit to pull that truck out of there. And I mean, quite a bit, and it's so far out here and remote. I mean, it's gonna be tough to get that out of there. All right, well, at least half the road now is cleared. better look at that we have half a road now that's way better than one lane now we got like one and a half lanes nice this is one of our generating stations we gotta go uh, over top of it to the other side of the river and cross over the Nelson River which is the main powerhouse of Manitoba is where a lot of our electricity comes from just this one river this is the water that comes up the Red River into Lake Winnipeg and then overflows in Lake Winnipeg on the north side into the Nelson River. Comes all the way up this way. It creates electricity for all of us and for parts of Minnesota. Huge! Wow! That's amazing. Oh, am I going to be able to get past this guy? Uh oh. Squeak past. We'll see. <laughs> He's moving over for me, so. Don't hit me, bud.
think it gets much cleaner than that. Not that I'm any expert on it or anything. I mean, <laughs> I'm a truck driver. Just about empty and we go home won't make it all the way home today yet but we'll get as far as we can i'm gonna show you something though this looks pretty cool you don't see this all the time look at that huh. isn't that interesting you'd think that that would cause my tires to be really like imbalanced right i didn't notice it nice smooth ride the other ones did that oh yeah look at that Interesting, right? I thought that was pretty cool. A load of motorcycle doors all the way back home. Fine with me. That sun is going to go down really soon though. And I really don't want to be up here on these winter roads. Or on these northern roads at night if I don't have to. We gotta do what we gotta do. Like these generating stations, I'm just, I'm always just amazed at humans. I'm amazed at what people have accomplished, what they can build. It's just amazing. Look at all that water off to the right, all being held back by a man-made dam. That's creating electricity. That's being shot down some wires hundreds and hundreds of kilometers down south so that when I get home, I can turn on my oven and make myself a pizza pop. All of this, you know, it makes you appreciate every single pizza pop, whether you cook it in the microwave or in the oven. It's better if you cook them in the oven or if you bake them in the oven, much better. go down and see the Hoover Dam one day in the US and then you know if I ever get like lots of money and feel ambitious I'd love to go see what's it called Five Gorges Dam in China like the world's largest water dam generating station that'd be interesting to go see that too Oh, wait, no, that's a grater. <laughs> the graters in Manitoba have blue flashing lights. Oh man, and I live here and it still got me. Oh, what are the cops doing out here? What happened? <laughs> Look at this guy go. Oh yeah, there you go. Have fun, bud. Have fun, thank you very much. Nice. He's still
still here. He's got his hazards on. Guess they haven't been able to pull him out yet. Yeah, there he is. At least he's got lights like that flashing, eh? Shoot, but someone's coming though? Yeah. Okay. No truck has been here. Okay, he good. He could not pull me out. Oh, shoot. Do you got food and water? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. thank you, man. Okay. I got everything. Okay, take uh, care. Stay warm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We made it back to Thompson. It was a lot quicker on the way back because the roads had already been plowed. We did it a lot better. Going back to the Petro Pass, I'm going to grab some fuel and then try to trip plan where I can park tonight with the amount of hours I have left on my logbook. See what I come up with. All in all, from Thompson to Gillum, back to Thompson today was 714 kilometers. Pelican Landing, Grand Rapids, Manitoba. This is where we made it, with about seven minutes left on our clock yesterday. <laughs> what a day. That was a long, exhausting day. I was so tired, I just went straight to bed. But tomorrow's another day, so thanks for hanging out with me through those uh, crazy winter roads. <coughs> Excuse me, we made it. We made it. So I'll see you right here tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe. We make a new video almost every day. My life trucking around North America or around the Midwest mostly. And sometimes we include a little bit of stuff from home as well. So there's a big variety on the channel. So I'll see you right here tomorrow. Take care. <laughs>